Reading's future colleague. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Good afternoon, history enthusiasts. Okay, hello. Hi, everybody. Hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Mark Goldberg. Hi, my name is Tsepa Masango Sherry. Hi, I'm Dr. Monica Perales. Hi, my name is Josiah Rector. I'm Dr. Xiaoping Chong. Hey there, I'm Dr. Karen Kleiman. My name is Jahan Yuxai. I am Professor Hannah Decker. I'm Professor Kathy Patterson. I'm Dr. Raul Ramos. I am Dr. Philip Howard. Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Romero. And I give courses on 19th and 20th century German history. My specialty is the Ottoman Empire. And I study social and political movements in Southern Africa. And I teach Latinx history and Jewish history. And I teach Chicano history classes, Texas history classes, and history of the American West. I am a historian of the civil rights movement of the 20th century. I teach Northern Arab and Middle Eastern history. I teach 20th century U.S. history with a focus on urban history and environmental history. I teach Houston history and U.S. history. I also teach classes in public history methods, so oral history and history magazine writing and editing. I teach African history, environmental, and energy history. And I teach early American and increasingly food and public history here. My interests are the Spanish and Portuguese empires between about 1400 and 1800. And I teach ancient history and digital history. And I'm also teaching Chinese history and other East Asian courses as well. I teach modern Mexican history. My area of expertise is legal history, women's history, and political history. I am a professor of early North American history. And I specialize in British history. Why am I a historian? So I love many things about teaching history, researching, and writing history. And it's hard for me to pick just one. I love doing what I do for a number of reasons, but let me just give you a few. I'm in this field for the excitement of being on the trail, of answering my question, of being in the archive. It's the work of finding clues from the past. These can be in manuscripts, letters, diaries, archives, maps, police records and so on, and beginning to piece together a story about those who have made our world. Uh, I've always loved getting lost in a world of fragments and trying to make sense of the partial, problematic, and uh, often biased evidence that we wrestle with as historians in order to make an argument about a particular person, place, or context in the past in order to understand it more thoroughly. Through these sources, I can see that they are very different from us. But at the same time, they are not that different from us. What I love about history is really just the process of discovery. Have you ever dreamed of discovering a lost civilization in some faraway land? For me, that's no dream. I'm Professor Holt, and that's what I do every day. I have brought back to life a forgotten Greek kingdom in ancient Afghanistan. I have CT scanned an Egyptian mummy, brainstormed with NASA engineers about ancient solutions, to future challenges in spaceflight. I have helped Egyptologists identify ancient coins from their excavations, and I've pioneered important new research methods using numismatics. Along the way, I have published nine books and nearly a hundred articles about everyone from Alexander the Great and Hammurabi to Cicero and Cleopatra, and on everything from buried treasures and obelisks to temples and King Tut's tomb. One of the things I love about being a historian is how I get to use computer programs and digital techniques to open up new windows into the lives of people who lived in the past. And that includes being able to do 3D scans of ancient coins. You know, one of the things I really enjoy about history is that it gives me a chance to work on a lot of different subjects, a lot of different fields, and use a lot of different approaches. I remember when I was in college, I couldn't quite figure out what I like to do, I like literature, I enjoyed anthropology, my economics courses, and history was the place I could do all of those. And not only do each of these disciplines, but see how they relate to each other and find those connections. What I love about history is that it is a story of human motivation. What makes people do the things they do? It tells us about the present as much as it tells us about the past. I'm a really firm believer in that adage that you can't know where you're going until you know where you've been. 
It's the thing that connects us to something bigger than what we are. It tells us where we've been, who we are, and who we want to be. History is a powerful force that determines nothing less than the national and social development. As a 20th century historian, I'm interested in how our societies came to be shaped in the way that they are today. I am curious by nature and am fascinated with knowing why things are the way they are. Among the many, many different subjects I took in college, history, more than anything else, provided the best systematic way of answering those big why questions for me. Ranging from why certain power structures exist in governmental affairs, why certain policies are applied in different ways to different categories of people, and why some people or groups of people have more power in society than other groups of people. Why is it that what often counts in history is not what is true, but what people believe is true? And this is what makes history important. If you don't study and engage with history, others will do it for you, and you might not necessarily want to live in a world that they will create for you. History is about engaging with people's voices. It's about reflecting on the human condition. I've always seen my study of history to be about the self-emancipation of Black people as they face a myriad of struggles throughout the world. I have enjoyed working in the archives and bringing to life the story of individuals who have worked for social justice for long periods of time. But what has been most fascinating with my work has been my meeting persons like Rosa Parks from the Montgomery Bus Boycott or Stokely Carmichael, also known as Kwame Toure, or also Julian Bond of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee and many others. Their lives have been fascinating. They sacrificed a lot. And it is just a great opportunity to be able to talk about their lives and what their lives meant at that time, as well as the time in which we are still struggling with some of these very important issues like social justice and how we can compare the work of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee with the work of Black Lives Matter within our lifetime. As historians, we have the chance to preserve and record perspectives and voices from the past that would otherwise be forgotten. So for example, I've conducted dozens of oral history interviews with activists in the civil rights, labor, and environmental movements in the 20th century. And many of those are activists who are elderly and may not be with us in 10 years or 20 years. So by conducting those interviews, I was able to preserve their voices and perspectives for posterity for other people to use, including students as well as historians. So as historians, we don't only get to study records left by others in the past, but we actually get to create records. And I think that's incredibly rewarding and valuable. We learn not only about the past and some of the amazing figures who made our world what it is today, but we also glean lessons as to how to continue movements for freedom, for justice, for human equality, for civil rights. I love working in the diverse communities that make up our city. By studying Houston history, I get to learn more about my community uh, and its past and the people who live here, which is really uh, exciting to me. It's also been quite personal for me. I fled South Africa at the age of six because of my parents' political activism. In that period, I turned to books and eventually to archives to make sense of the apartheid regime, the resistance movements that came from it, as well as apartheid's many afterlives. What I like most about history is that it exists all around us. It doesn't just live in our classrooms or in our textbooks. It exists in our communities, in our neighborhoods, and even in our families. Now, I think that studying history is interesting and it's fun, but it also teaches critical skills for your career or for your job. Reading and writing are central components of the study of history. This is why when you take history classes, you become a more analytical, 
critical reader, and a better writer who can communicate ideas more clearly. It provides and develops your ability to do research and to assess information sources of all sorts. It provides skills with weighing evidence and for building arguments and drawing conclusions based firmly on that evidence. History majors learn how to share the results of research in compelling fashion. One of the things that my students do is they produce articles for this uh, publication, Houston History, which is done by the Center for Public History here at U of H. We uh, conduct oral histories, and then the students write articles that are published in this um, absolutely uh, gorgeous full-color magazine that we produce. It's a great thing to have on a resume and in a portfolio. The most rewarding part for me, though, is we get to spread that history out into the community and see how folks there react to the work that we've done. And in our classes, understanding the past goes beyond the written text. Movies, music, objects, paintings, and maps are just some of the many sources that we can use to explore the past in exciting and creative ways. And as a social and cultural historian, I'm interested in pop culture as a window into the past. So I, I like to look at things like music, food, and art in all my classes. And the kind of question that I'm interested in answering is, is something like, what does this classic salsa record tell us about history, community, and politics? It allows them to engage with a whole range of people's testimonials and experiences. It broadens knowledge and the perspective of our students in a global age. I'm very happy to see my students pursue new knowledge and seeing the world with different eyes. It's a way to show the students that there is more than one story in human experience, regardless of time and space. I emphasize the historical complexity of past societies that are often perceived as backward or uncivilized. And I invite students to discover surprising parallels among different ethnicities and religions that are often considered drastically different from each other. I love teaching African history because it liberates your mind. Once you figure out that things aren't true that you've been hearing all your life about Africa, it makes you realize lots of other things aren't true and you need to investigate. The understanding of the complex and complicated past allows students to better understand some of the problems that we continue to face as a larger society today. I hope that a multi-layered understanding of the past and the recognition of its close connections with the present can instill empathy in our students at a time when we are surrounded by the news of gun violence and civil wars. I love teaching about historical events that allow students to see themselves and their communities in the stories that are told. And with a little practice in learning to read and analyze primary source documents, figure out what questions to ask of those documents, and the natural curiosity that you all have to uncover the unknown, students will discover that they are great storytellers too. I love teaching history because I get to help students explain the world around them. The subject of history covers absolutely everything that has ever happened, especially since the advent of writing. Good history explains the causes and effects of past events and helps us to understand their significance then and now. History majors often get jobs teaching high school history or go on to earn master's degrees or doctoral degrees on their way to becoming college professors or independent scholars. But history majors also pursue other careers because of the transferable skills they learn. I love teaching history because I believe that the fundamental skills that we give our students in terms of analytical skills, basic research skills, writing and presentation skills, will give them wings that will carry them through whatever later comprises their profession. So history teaches students to think from a broad perspective, but it also provides critical skills that will be useful in the 21st century workplace, wherever you may work. These are skills that are useful in nearly any career, including law, business, public policy, or public service, to name just a few. So is public history with institutions like museums and other 
kinds of local and community history organizations. So is urban planning. So is environmental policy and planning. Research jobs in research departments with government or private organizations work in the nonprofit sector. Before I went to graduate school, I was a legal clerk. I worked on an intellectual property litigation team. And I have to say that a lot of what I did really was the critical thinking and the critical writing that uh, we do as historians. Discovery in a trial is a long process of trying to find the gem that's going to basically win your case. And lawyers, like historians, are really interested in that critical analysis. As soon as I finished college, I, I had different jobs related to history. Um, I worked in publishing houses as um, to, to write books for a popular audience. I also work with filmmakers um, as a researcher and as a consultant for historical films. I, um, I have participated in about five films, um, most of them documentary films. Also, um, I, I have worked in museums as a picture researcher, um, also for several exhibits. And finally, I also have worked as a research assistant in the archives. Many years ago, I was the undergraduate director and I wanted to find out, um, I wanted to sort of try to get in touch with alumni who had majored in history and um, bring them back to campus, maybe a few people back to meet with our students. So I had the alumni office give me a list of people who had earned degrees in history from the University of Houston in the previous five or 10 years, something like that. And I wanted to mention it because um, while a lot of people might think of getting a history major means teaching or law school, our alumni were everywhere. They were in the business world, they were in public sector, they were in nonprofits, a really incredibly diverse number of professions that I found that they were exercising. And it really made me feel like, um, you know, affirmed in my sense that it's a very useful major for all kinds of things. According to a recent survey of a substantial number of corporate CEOs, that were asked what skills would an ideal job candidate have to possess before hiring them. The majority reported that they wanted someone who could collect data. The candidate had to have the critical thinking skills to check, verify, and interpret the information. More importantly, they said that this individual would have to show the critical communication skills to present the reports or ideas clearly either orally or in well-written documents. A degree in history allows you to develop all of these skills. Acquiring them are essential to join and to compete in the global information-based economy. This fact makes a degree in history relevant now and well into the future. So that's really what it's all about. So when it comes to lost civilizations, ancient treasures and Egyptian mummies, why let a Hollywood actor with a leather whip and fancy fedora have all the fun? Do what I do. Become an historian. If you care about why things are the way they are, then come to history. We have the classes that will help you figure this out. For someone who is very passionate about the history, about research, about the going to archives, and you, I would encourage you to, to follow your dreams, don't, don't, don't give up. To be a historian is to participate in the collective pursuit of the truth, the creation and distribution of knowledge, and the education of the next generation. The possibilities are endless because history majors who can answer the big why questions with conviction are well positioned for whatever career path they choose. And so if you love history, major in history, what can you do with it? Anything you want. I think if you gave it a try, you'd be just as hooked on it as I am. So good luck in your journey. Thank you. Hope to see you.